Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about how to get your second gig, your follow-up gig at the concert venue that you want to play. Stay tuned because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Chris King here. I'm sitting inside of Sticky's Rock and Roll Chicken Shack in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's a beautiful day here. I hope that you are having a beautiful day wherever you are. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Love Live Music channel and clicking to follow along with my video. It's gonna be short and sweet today because we're talking about one single thing that you can do to make sure that you get a follow-up gig at the venue that you want your band to play. So this could be a, a local show, this could be a, a show out of town or something like that, but there's one thing that you can do to really help secure that second gig. And it all starts before the first gig. Here's the important part. It's about promoting yourself. You've got to take an active role in your own self-promotion if you want to be a successful band member that gets gigs. This is if you're an original artist. This is if you are in a cover band. You've got to take the effort to promote yourself. If you don't feel comfortable promoting yourself, then you've got to be able to hire someone that can help you promote either your own solo show or your band gig. And there are so many simple things that can be done in that manner, and they reflect hugely on the chances of a follow-up shot from your local promoter or from the guy out of town that you're trying to get the gig from. These start with something as simple as social media. Make sure that you're tagging the venue. Make sure that you're tagging your show. Make sure that uh, you're starting anywhere from six to eight weeks out if you've got that much time. Sometimes you've got less time than that. Sometimes it's just two to four weeks. Or maybe it's even that you find out about the gig a couple of days ahead of time. Whenever it is, when you finally get that gig locked in, make sure that you go on your social media platforms and announce that you have the gig. Make sure that you've got the times correct on it and that you can promote that. If you're the opening act, then make sure that you tag who the headliner is going to be. If you're the headliner and you know who's on the bill with you uh, for openers, tag them as well. But use social media, don't sleep on it, don't get lazy with it. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you might do it on Snapchat or you might do it on TikTok even, but whatever you do, show that you make an effort. Next thing you can do is get some information inside the four walls of the venue. For venue owners, that is one of the key components is that uh, over time, we see a lot of traffic through the doors and we need to have flyers up from our upcoming shows. That's the most effective way to promote to people that enjoy what you do already. Because we've got the venue, we're accustomed to doing live shows. People that come in love live music. They love coming to our live shows, so they're gonna be looking for what's next. In the bathrooms, on the walls, by the door, by the area where they uh, take cover charge and check IDs, uh, in the back, in the smoking area, wherever. Make, you know, hand them one to put up uh, in the back of house for the guys in the kitchen to see what's coming up. But it's super important that you make the effort. It doesn't have to be color and flashy, although that seems to be more noticeable. It can be old school black and white. That's certainly how I started off making flyers, was, uh, was going down to Kinko's late at night, laying out my format on a light board and cutting and pasting my flyers in a collage and, uh, and putting those up around town back when I was in a band. Not that much has changed since then. It's still very important that you get flyers out, get them in the venue, get them at some local hangout spots, some coffee shops, maybe around the grocery stores, liquor stores, uh, things, you know, if there's, a, if there's a cool shoe store, if there's a cool, if your town still is lucky enough to have a cool record store, something like that, that just makes a lot of sense to get the flyer up for your show in those areas. And then lastly, uh, tell your friends, word of mouth. Call your friends, say, hey, I've got a show coming up. Uh, don't be afraid to do that because if you want to grow 
and have more people see you, then you're going to constantly have a larger sphere, hopefully, of people that are aware of you and people that appreciate and uh, would like to know where you're playing again. So don't put off these types of self-promotion. They're super important. And really, that's a lot of times how people, you know, if you sit around and you say, well, why did they get the gig and I didn't get the gig? Well, it's because they've done things like this. They've made themselves noticeable to the promoter, to the talent buyer, that you're putting the effort in to try to get people out to the show. At the most basic, let's say that you're playing a $100 opening slot for somebody. Do you have... 20 friends that are going to pay $5 to come out and see you because that's the value that the promoter needs to see is that there are there are 20 people are there 10 people that are going to pay $10 to come out and see you if not and you haven't done any promotion on your own then it's very difficult for the promoters and the talent buyers to want to go down that road again because we can find somebody that will do the legwork and that has the hustle, that can work along with our advertising plan to make sure that the most people know about the show, to give everybody the best way possible to be successful. And that is the number one way that you can make sure that you're opening the doors for your second gig before you even have your first gig. That's how the decisions are made. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you liked this and you want to hear more about uh, how to get gigs, how to get your band gigs, if you want to hear more about what I think about music, uh, some of my favorite acts, some of the things that I have to say about people I've worked with through the years, some good stories from backstage, then stay in touch with us here on Love Live Music because we've got a lot more coming up and I can't wait to see you again. Subscribe to me, please. That would be very nice. Love you guys, and I'll see you at the show.